Made in Hollywood. When people ask me if I went to film school, I tell them, no, I went to films. Quentin Tarantino. Introductory material. Dear learner, this material will help you study the topics related to a learning activity one. You will learn about one, passive voice in simple present and past forms. Two, expressing opinions about books and movies. Let's begin. Hi, John. What's up? What have you been up to lately? Not much. I just saw a good film. You'd like it. Really? Which one? The Treasure of the Andes. The title sounds interesting, but I don't remember it. I don't think I've seen that one. What is it about? Well, it's about an indigenous tribe that disappeared in the Andes a long time ago. Oh, I remember. That one was filmed in Peru, right? Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, and no famous actors were involved. I read an article about it in Film Weekly. Yes, I noticed that when I was watching the movie. But they were really good actors. They are. It is said that they were paid very little, though. Yes, but they are just starting their acting careers. I've heard that some of them were offered a contract in a new feature-length film directed by the same director. Good for them. The other thing about the movie, besides the acting, I mean, is that the soundtrack was spectacular. I agree. It was recorded after the movie was shot by a Peruvian orchestra that uses typical Andean instruments. Yeah, and now the soundtrack is sold everywhere. It is. I'd like to buy it. Well, I'd like a copy too. Shall we go after class? Sure. Let's meet later at the lab. Does that work for you? It is perfect, but I have to go now. I have class. See you. Okay. Have a good lesson. Bye. A. Differences between passive and active voice. Passive voice. That one was filmed in Peru. Active voice. They filmed that in Peru. No famous actors were involved. They didn't involve famous actors. The actors were paid very little. People paid little to the actors. Some of the actors were offered a new contract. They offered a new contract to some of the actors. The soundtrack was recorded after the film was shot. They recorded the music after they shot the film. The soundtrack is sold everywhere. Store sell the soundtrack everywhere. As you can see in the chart, in English, there are several important differences between the passive and active voice. Take a look at the examples below for more information. Take a look at the following sentence in the active voice. Mary, subject, sells, main verb, third person singular, simple present, cakes, direct object. Now compare the sentence transformed into passive voice. Cakes, direct object, are, verb plural form, simple present, sold, past participle, the changes occur as follows. Mary sells cakes. Bueno, bueno, bueno. In the passive voice, the subject is normally omitted as in the previous example. Sometimes in the example above, the actor or agent, 
the person performing the action, is not clear. However, there are cases where using the actor or agent can be made explicit by adding a prepositional phrase with the word by. For example, the passive sentence above could also be written as, Cakes are sold by Mary. B. Use of the passive voice. You have probably heard about the differences between formal and informal writing. These are the two ways people can write in English. Passive voice is more commonly used in formal written English. It is often used in newspapers, academic reports, and writing, which try to be less personal. Most passive sentences do not have an agent. The focus of the sentence is not on the doer of the action, but on its recipient instead. Let's take a look at how to use passive voice in specific cases. Avoid taking responsibility. The person who did the action is not implicated or identified. The question that matters is what and not who. Active. I broke my laptop. Passive. My laptop was broken. My laptop was broken. I is omitted from the passive sentence. Other examples. They mine gold in the western coast. Gold is mined in the western coast. We study languages in order to preserve them. Languages are studied in order to be preserved. Give more importance to the direct object of an active voice sentence. The direct object of the active voice sentence becomes a subject of the passive voice sentence. Active. Mary sells cakes. Passive. Cakes are sold. Cakes are sold. It is not important to know who makes the cakes. Cakes is the important word in the sentence. Other examples. People eat popcorn at the movie theaters. Popcorn is eaten at the movie theaters. My family bought the tickets for the film. The tickets were bought. Keep an impersonal register when writing or speaking. In academic writing especially, the personal pronouns naming the agent is not common. Active. I collected the data. Passive, the data was collected. In order to make the text sound more objective, that is, as though the researcher did not interfere in the experiment, the personal pronoun or subject that is the agent is omitted. Other examples. The technician added potassium and mixed it in. The technician heated the solution to 80 degrees Celsius and then allowed it to cool. Potassium was added and mixed in. The solution was heated to 80 degrees Celsius and then allowed to cool. Woody Allen filmed The Purple Rose of Cairo in 1985. The Purple Rose of Cairo was filmed in 1985. It is necessary to use passive voice when the actor is unknown. Active. The robber stole it last Saturday. Passive. It was stolen last Saturday. It was stolen last Saturday. What we know is that something was stolen. What we do not know is who took it. Other examples. Somebody took my money. My money was taken. Someone broke the window. The window was... C. How to form the passive voice in simple present and simple past. Notice that the passive voice is formed in simple present and simple past, plus the past participle with regular and irregular verbs. Also, notice that the verbs are conjugated according to their subjects. Note. The verb to be in this chart is conjugated in simple present and simple past. The passive voice can be formed in other tenses too. However, here we only focus on the simple present and simple past tense. Remember that the past participle of regular verbs is formed by adding ed to the verb.
Irregular verbs have irregular past participles. Use the reference chart below to help you form the passive voice using the irregular verbs. Remember to start getting used to them. Two, expressing opinions about books and movies. Books and movies are like apples and oranges. They both are fruit, but taste completely different. Stephen King. There's always been this discussion about film and books to see which one is better. People spend hours talking about how better is a book in comparison with the movie. You always listen to people out of the movie saying, oh, the book is way better and arguing how impossible it is for a movie to tell a very long story in only two or three hours. I disagree with this. Movies and books both are opportunities for humans to face reality. People believe movies and books are fantasies that give them the possibility of inventing new worlds for escaping our own. I think they are a reality themselves. It is a common fact that certain things leave in your life and certain things stay with you. And that's why we're all interested in movies and books. Those ones that make you feel you still think about. Because they gave us such an emotional response, they're actually part of our emotional makeup in a way. Watching a movie or reading a book is a way to reflect on life experiences and, and yourself. The discussion needs to point to another direction. We should start considering talking about them in terms of what they make people feel, what they do in people's lives. A. Let's learn some vocabulary that will help you talk about movies. What sort of movies do you like? There are a lot of genres to choose from when wanting to watch a movie. It depends on different factors such as the person you are with, the mood of the day, and how you are feeling. If you're not scared about blood, speed, and fights, you can go for an action. Fights, car chases, etc. Or horror, lots of blood or ghostly visits. Film. If you're going on a date, perhaps you'll prefer a comedy or romantic one. Dramas and epics are highly recommended for women who like to cry at the movies. There are also other possibilities like musicals, science fiction, or the must-see classics. Although genres are a good way to choose a movie, there are other aspects that you should like to take into account. Some people will prefer to catch the latest movie, Others will choose based on the actors or the director, and some others will trust the trailer. At the end, what really matters is to pick up one and go to the movies to enjoy a film that can take you away from everything for two or three hours. Action. Horror. Drama. Romantic. Comedy. Classics. Cartoons. Epics, science fiction. Once you've seen the film you choose, you might want to tell your friends about it. Here are some tips for doing that. I thought the film was, the actor's costume screenplay are, you'll have to go and see it for yourself. You might also want to have some adjective to describe things. Here you have some. True to life. Masterpiece. Believable. The real story of Oscar winning. Fantastic. Remarkable. Unlike. Terrible. B. What about books? Let's talk about books now. Good friends, good books, and a sleepy conscious. This is the ideal life. Mark Twain. Similar to films, there are millions of books in the world which people would never have enough time to read. There are all kinds of books out there, and the chances that you will find many you like are pretty big. In order to read a book, the only thing you will need is time for doing it. Books are entire worlds that are out there for you to pick them up and discover amazing things you might not know yet. So, 
just go take out a book from my library and start to be engrossed in it. Although it is not a rule, try to read it from cover to cover in order to allow yourself to discover the whole new world. Take advantage of free time. You will see that once you choose a right one, you wouldn't put it down, and you will spend good bedtime reading. Look at the chart and get familiar with the vocabulary related to books. Title, the name of the book. Chapter, a section of the book. Theme, general overall topic. Setting, where the story takes place. Plot, storyline. Issues, important ideas the book explores. Character, the person the story is about. Climax, the big moments of the story. In order to talk about a book, you could use some of the expressions and words that are listed under. To be engrossed in. To be completely focused on one thing. To be heavy going. Difficult to read. The central character. The main character person in a book, to flick through, to look quickly through a book, a page turner, a book that you want to keep reading. Contextualization. Listen to the following conversation between Richard and Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Hi there. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Well, taking out the paper for tomorrow. What kind of paper are you writing? It is supposed to be a review, but I haven't even started yet. How come? Isn't it for tomorrow? What is it about? It's about a book, but writing reviews is difficult. Come on, Richard. It is not so hard. And books are fascinating, don't you think? Sure. The problem is that I don't know how to write a review. Do you? Well, yes. I can help you if you want. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Most reviews are about expressing your opinion on a subject. Yeah, I got that. But don't they have a kind of a structure? Of course they do. Reviews are divided into three parts. My professor told me so, but what do I write on each one? To me, the intro and the explanation are the same. Oh, I see what your difficulty is. Let's start with the intro, shall we? Okay, the intro tells the reader the topic, right? Yes, and also the reason why you are writing your review. But wouldn't it be the explanation? Not really. The introduction is about your personal reason to write the review. The explanation... is about the ideas to support my opinion. Exactly. In the explanation, you describe the key elements of the work. I see. Those elements are the supporting ideas for my final opinion paragraph. Exactly. Just remember to keep a neutral style, including some passive sentences. So basically, a review has three parts, right? It does. The opinion is the last paragraph. Keep also in mind that it has to be clearly written. It sounds so easy now. Thank you so much, Johanna. No problem. I'm always glad to help. 